Um, hi there. Um, my name is uh, Harold Nowak. I'm a retired meteorologist living here in Melbourne, Australia, and the date today is the 1st of June 2019. Now, uh, I've received some feedback from various people and some mathematicians um, from my uh, last video about the Collett's um, conjecture and its proof. Um, some of the feedback, well, from some mathematicians have said, look, smart mathematicians have looked at this problem for over 80 years and not solved it, so you're not going to solve it. Um, well, yeah, well, yeah, I suppose, I suppose that's true, but you know, maybe that's a bit of hubris, I don't know. Anyway, um, I just find the first um, stumbling block uh, to, to be um, to prove the Collex conjecture uh, you need to prove that every collet sequence has a value in it less than the starting value. Now, I'll try and prove this as simply as I can um, in the following way. Um, now, a collet sequence, look, it can start with any positive integer except one, um, the number one, that is. Um, all terms in the collet sequence can only be positive integers. And, and the collet sequence can only end in one of three ways. It can go to plus infinity, it can go in a loop, or it goes to one. So um, let's, let's just, let's take a collet um, sequence and it's S1 followed by S2, followed by S3, S4, S5, S6, S7, all the way to Sn. Um, now, let's, let's put in the condition, every collet sequence has in it a value lower than the starting value. Now, any collet sequence can be started with S1, it can be started with S2, it can be started with S3, S4, S5, S6, S7, even Sn, except if the value is 1. Um, because they're all positive integers. That's, that's what the collet sequence is made up of. Um, so let's look at the, let's look at the sequence. Um, S1, we're saying that S1 has to be followed by a lower value. Um, it's because it starts the collet sequence. Um, but uh, what we're also saying is S2 has to be followed by a lower value because it can start a collet sequence. But um, S3 can start a collet sequence too, so it must be followed by a lower value. And S4 must be followed by a lower value. S5 must be followed by a lower value. S6 must be followed by a lower value. S7 must be followed by a lower value. So every value in the sequence except for one must be followed by, by a lower value. Now, um, if that's the case, the sequence cannot go to, to plus infinity um, because there's always got to be a lower, there's always got to be an, a lower value um, coming up. It can't go in a loop because you, all you have to do is get the lowest point in the loop and say, look, there's a lower value than that somewhere. And that takes you outside the loop, so it can't go in the loop. So all you're left with is Sn is equal to one unless there was a one earlier on somewhere else in the sequence but it but it, it so the condition ensures that every collet sequence ends in one um and i don't really see the problem so with the condition every collet sequence has a value somewhere in the sequence that is less than the starting value the outcome is every collet sequence must go to one and i don't think i can i can put that any more clearly now in my work, I, 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 I went through a process of eliminating integers um, that start a collet sequence, and I can project uh, the number of collet sequences that have a value less than the starting value to be at step 200, all but six in 10 million numbers. Um, only six have not been eliminated. At step 300, two in every one billion um, have uh, have not been eliminated. And in step 400, it's a little bit over one in 1,000 billion. And that's 10 to the power of 12 um, have not been eliminated. Um, so 
Um, you know, that's that's all I'm saying. Now, now people have come back and, and they made a valid point. It says, even if you project um, that there exists one in every 10 to the 12 numbers um, that does not go below the starting value, um, you have not proved the Collett's conjecture because you need to prove it for all positive numbers. And all positive numbers is an infinite set of numbers. And I've only, I've only proved it for, for that, um, for one in every 10 to the 12. Um, and that's not good enough. Um, and I agree. I agree. Yeah, look, 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 certainly it's not good enough. But look, it's, 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 I think it's, it's gone some way um, to giving you, uh, to, to getting closer to the proof than what most other what most other people have done. Um, now, some people have have directed me to read some books which highlight certain patterns in the Collett's uh, sequence. But what all of these books fail to acknowledge is that the Collett's sequence belongs to a large family of functions that do exactly the same thing. When they point out out various things that happen in the Collett's sequence, my reaction is. That's nothing special. All of these functions do that. You know, it's kind of like looking at a single parameter and saying, oh, look, a, a single uh, parabola, and saying, look, here, it crosses the x axis, it crosses the y axis, and look, it turns. Um, but all parabolas do that. Um, so, so that's my point. That, that, that's, what these, what, that's what these books miss out on. Look, it's, it may be interesting to look at specifics. Yeah, I agree. But looking at them in the context of the big picture is really more informative. Um, now, some people have come back and said, forget about modular maths. You know, you need to look at cycles. Um, and my reply to that is, you know, this is called the hailstone sequence. And we can use hailstones as a corollary to this. We can say the conjecture is all hailstones fall to the ground. Now, people have looked at big hailstones, they've looked at little hailstones, they looked at hailstones in the morning, and they looked at hailstones in the afternoon, and they've looked at hailstones going round and round in cycles up in the clouds um, and everything like that. And they've found that all hailstones um, fall to the ground. It's a conjecture because you can't prove that all hailstones fall to the ground. But the point about it is all ha hailstones fall to the ground because of gravity. You can, it's nothing much to do with cycles up in the clouds or anything like that. Um, so when you're looking to solve the conjecture, you have to kind of look, what is, what is there in the Collett's conjecture that acts as gravity to bring all the numbers down, down to one? And I think this going below the starting value um, is closer to gravity to representing gravity than than um, you know looking at cycles looking at cycles up in the air, um, and I suppose the other thing is you know don't be too hard on modular math after all that's what that's the only thing computers use so you know it can't be that bad after all. Um, okay, um, and that's all from me. Um, thank you very much, Harold Nowak.